Why does a ballerina not get dizzy when she spins round and round on one leg? Or indeed, a male ballet dancer. Well, maybe some of them do, but the best dancers, of course, don't. Research done at Imperial College London suggests that the rigorous training that dancers undergo may help them to suppress signals from the inner ear to the brain. And these findings may have a, quite a practical application for people who suffer from chronic dizziness. It's rather more common than you may believe. Well, we're joined here by Deborah Bull, former principal, of course, with the Royal Ballet, uh, now executive director of the Cultural Institute at King's College London, and Dr Barry Seamungal, a uh, neurologist who did the research. And how would you sum up your finding as far as it touches on the skill of a ballet dancer? So uh, I'm not qualified to comment on the skill of a ballet dancer, <laughs> but um, in terms of brain structure uh, related to function, we found two major uh, uh, things. First of all, we found that an area of the brain called the cerebellum, which is important for processing sensory signals of dizziness, is smaller in dancers, and it was related to the, the amount of dancing they'd done. So the more experienced dancers, this area is smaller. In other words, it's something that uh, changes with training. It's not something they're born with. I mean, you're not, you're not suggesting that uh, people with a, a small cerebellum become dancers because it suits. Correct. So, we, obviously, we, we didn't scan them as children and follow them up. No, no. But uh, the, the, the relationship between the size and the amount of training uh, suggests that this is a training-related phenomenon. And the consequence of that shrinkage, if that's what it is, is what? Well, so dancers really never want to feel dizzy. And uh, when dancers uh, pirouette, apart from spotting... Uh, they really want to dispense with any sensation of imbalance and dizziness. And if they can do that effectively and continuously, they do that with fewer uh, neurons, if you like. Well, uh, Deborah Bull is here now. Uh, I mean, apart from the fact that you don't want to fall over, which <laughs> is rather an obvious point, um, when you began serious training as a young girl, when you realised this was... Did you have... Did you consciously... Um, find yourself overcoming um, dizziness. Dizziness. No, it's absolutely integral to the training. We use this technique called spotting, which you know, I, I think people. If anybody's standing in front of their bathroom mirror now, you know, look at yourself in the eyes, turn your body to the right, leave your head to the left, then then you flick it right back round as fast as you well, can. Well, I should just say you're spinning round in your <laughs> I'm chair. Spinning round in my chair in a most <laughs> elegant fashion. But the thing is, Sarah was explaining this to me before. It's the head is the last to move and then the, the head first is to come the back. The last to move and the first to come back, and that's a technique which is integral to the pirouette to spin. So you never spin, unless, unless you're an ice skater, of course, who do things differently. But almost yes. every dancer I can think of, katak, ballet, ballroom mm. dancers, they spot. So it's integral to the training. So clearly, hundreds of years ago, somebody worked out, probably actually um, <laughs> beyond that, it's probably deep in our in inheritance that we realised that if you fix your eyes on something and don't allow the fluid in the inner ear to build up as much when you spin, then you get less dizzy. So it's integral to the training. So Does that make sense? Uh, yes. So the spotting is very relevant to the findings. In particular, we know this to be the case because um, individuals who are born with an eye oscillation called congenital nystagmus, they are exposed to a similar sort of phenomenon that the eyes are having visual motion information all the time. And if you test them, they are also relatively resistant to dizziness. So I think the spotting, apart from helping the dancers to avoid dizziness does work in this fashion. And how does this help people who are subject to chronic dizziness? So we uh, treat patients with chronic dizziness with a number of, of approaches, but one of which we use is a form of training. I wouldn't want to say ballet training, mm. but it's, it's in a way similar. And so we, we really have no idea the brain mechanisms that we uh, invoke when treating patients with this form of training. And so this allows us to look at that in more detail. Uh, yeah, Deborah. I think what's really interesting here is we tend to think that when athletes train, the corresponding area of their brain gets bigger. We're used to seeing, you know, the taxi drivers who have an enlarged hippocampus because of all doing the knowledge. We all know about brains getting bigger. What I find really interesting here is what ballet dancers have done is refine and pr make precise the instruction to the brain so that actually the, 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 the brain has shrunk because we don't need all those extra neurons. Mm. We, we, we don't want all the fluff around it. We want the finest, most precise precise a message.
And All of course, you time. work at it very, very hard. We I mean, work the, at it. You know, the you famous know. ten thousand hours, ten years training, day in, day out. So I, I, I'd, I'd like to support that view, and I think that's entirely correct. And uh, it is relevant to treating patients in terms of engendering brain plasticity, because dancers are highly motivated individuals. And, and we now know that even older people can learn new tricks. And the main difference between a young person and an older person is motivation, amongst other factors. Uh, you don't want to say to an old person who's uh, afflicted by chronic dizziness, start doing pirouettes and do this with your head. No. No, exactly. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> Deborah, w would you do one for our web camera? I certainly would. I'm going to look at the camera now. I'm on a spinning chair, a bit like the dizziness chair. That's what spotting is about. <laughs> Absolutely. Focus, leave the head, whip it round. <laughs> Stops you getting dizzy. Our oh, chair's not usually used for that. That was a chair we had to stop doing that when the Queen came in, you know, because there was a feeling she might go, she might go around in a circle. Anyway, um, Deborah Bull and uh, Dr Barry Simongo, thank you both very much for joining thank us. You. Thanks a lot.